Rusty, how do you? Cousins, how to, how you do? Rusty here. Um, down here at the bargain warehouse, I'm in level F today, uh, row 63, uh, on the south side, of course. Uh, and uh, I wanted to bring to your attention a few items that I thought would be fun to talk about today, and that is the bizarre, the strange, the eccentric, the uh, odd, uh, you name it, uh, stuff that's just kind of bizarro, right? Um, and so uh, I wanted to go through these things. These are all stuff that I've picked up in the last six months. Uh, these are items that either haven't been listed yet or have not sold yet, which is why I have them in front of me today to talk about. Uh, there's a lot of others that we have sold that would fit in the same category, but they're gone now, so we won't talk about them. Uh, I'm going to go through this, uh, but before I do, just take a moment. If you like this kind of stuff, uh, if you're interested in looking at the kinds of treasures or maybe getting information that can help you find good things to buy and sell, take a moment, click the subscribe or uh, and, and, and like something. Maybe uh, even send us a message. Ask us a question or something. We'd love to interact with you. All right, moving on. What do we got first today? Well, I did a video on this a short not long ago. We'll start with one of the bigger items, and that is a banjo lin. Uh, what is a banjo lin? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, a banjo lin is essentially uh, a mashup of a banjo and a mandolin. A, the banjo portion is this section down here. Uh, you got the kind of the uh, the skin section here. Uh, to, to have the sound bounce off of it. Uh, and then you've got uh, a back here, which is a resonator. And in this case, it's got a nice little figure kind of painting here uh, on this resonator. This is a beautiful piece because it's made of burl wood, which is a, not the type of wood you see in a lot of instruments, certainly not in the last uh, 60 to 75 years. Uh, but back during the 20s and 30s and, and early 1900s, they used all kinds of different woods on guitars that you don't see today, like oak, uh, birch, things like that. This particular example has uh, what they like to say, uh, what they like to call mother of pearl, uh, or mother of toilet seat, as uh, some people like to jokingly refer to it. Um, the fact that this is here helps me to know it's probably manufactured sometime in the 1930s. There's a famous guitar by the Gibson Company uh, called the Century of Progress. There were only maybe 30 some, 33 possibly made, uh, but the neck is just like this. It has this color on it. It was, a, I think, like an L00 body style, kind of like their L00 guitars. Uh, but when I see this, I know that this was probably during that time period. It's it, roughly a 10-year period of manufacture. That's important for dating it because there's actually no way for me to see the actual age or who this is. There's nothing on the headstock and there's no markings on it to tell me who manufactured this. Um, the thing that's most interesting, let me turn it back around this way, is that someone took out an ink pen and drew on here a picture of what I'm told is Jane Russell, who was a famous actress back in the 40s and 50s. So they, this was manufactured probably in the mid to late 1930s. And then in the 40s, whenever this actress became famous and was out in the cinema, uh, somebody thought it'd be nice. Uh, she was kind of a, you know, uh, kind of heartthrob type uh, actress, um, attractive and all. Um, so what a cool little find. I've taken the strings and the floating bridge off of this, and I'm going to clean it up and put strings on it, make sure that it plays okay. we got the banjo portion here. I kind of got sidetracked in explaining that, but... Uh, the reason it's a mandolin is it's the size of a mandolin, roughly size and length, the fretboard size, and uh, it's actually strung with uh, four pairs of strings, and it's tuned just like a mandolin is. So you would chord that and play it like a mandolin, but of course it's going to sound like a banjo. Uh, not something that was out there a ton. Uh, I don't even know if they manufacture them anymore, but uh, certainly in the early 1900s when uh, there was all kinds of band uh, type of uh, music and things were not amplified yet, a lot of these instruments were made to project sound loudly because they'd be on a platform oftentimes in front of a large group of people, oftentimes outside, and they need to get that sand out. Uh, banjo lens can be found, but something that's hand-drawn like this, super uh, bizarre, and, and I thought it was really cool. I picked this up actually today. Uh, this was a hat. It was at a Goodwill in uh, their, kind of in their glass case. And uh, it's just a regular old kind of like a, I don't know what, what I would call this. Uh, it's got some kind of some hair on it. Um, but the most interesting part was this leather uh, kind of strap around it, which is made out of crocodile skin. And on the front, you actually have crocodile teeth on it. <clears throat> And so uh, let me just, you know, try it out here and see what it looks like. 
Well, you know what? It fits. Maybe I'll start doing my sourcing with this. Oh, in fact, I like the way that that feels. Uh, and so I'm going to do the rest of the video uh, with this on, if you don't mind. So a hat like this, I paid $6 for it. Uh, somebody's going to put this on and go wrestle some Crocs uh, down in Louisiana or in Florida. And uh, we'll be happy to have this because it will terrify. Uh, there's nothing like getting ready to go attack some something uh, that you have a piece of its body uh, on yourself as you're about to fight with them. So I like that. Uh, okay, moving on. Here's something that is super strange. And in fact, I do not even know what it is. And so listen up, people, because if you know what it is, please leave me a comment and tell me what you, what, or what you think it is. Maybe we'll talk about that too. Uh, first off, it's uh, roughly, you know, two feet long. It's, it's a little bit heavy, so I can tell that there's, it's wood. It's made out of wood. What kind of wood, I do not know. But it is entirely bound in leather. Uh, it is uh, tooled, and it is hand-stitched with some sort of, of thread through here. Two pieces, one here, and then one from here over to the end. Uh, such an interesting, intricate design. And I'll give you a picture uh, that we'll put on there close up so you can see that. But super strange. Uh, and on the end, it, it kind of bows out and it's got a flat end and it has almost what looks to be like a Maltese cross um, or an X, depending on how you look at that. I have no idea what this is. It sort of looks like a, a mace or um, whatever it was that Kings uh, walked around with. They had these uh, this little staff. I can't remember what that was called, but uh, super, super strange. I don't know if this... Um, is uh, is is like a um, for a drum to like to like beat on a drum some sort of a something in the, like a, a derivative of a, some sort of an island nation possibly uh, it could be Native American although it doesn't have what looks to be Native American design on it uh, or maybe this is made for some sort of a fraternal uh, organization uh, men's or women's uh, that they used in some sort of their ceremonies. It could be a ceremonial piece. My guess is that it is in some in some way, but I do not know what it is, and I do not know how old it is. Although I would not venture to guess that it's much older than 100 years, but it could be early 1900s. So sometimes I come across stuff like this, and I get it simply because it's strange, even though I don't know what it is or what the value. And today I'm standing here, I bought this six months ago, I still don't know what it is or what the value of it is. I'm not listening to it until I get some information. So if you know, please... Pass that along to me. I'll set that down here. Moving on, I'm going to uh, show you this little mask. This is something I put together. A little bit terrifying, depending on uh, what you think. Um, this thing is interesting because it's made out of wood. The teeth are made out of some sort of shell. And the hair that's on this is either human hair or my guess is probably some sort of animal hair like horse hair or goat hair or something like that and it is glued on anyhow moving on here it's uh, it's neat it's carved on the inside as you can see just like that it is hand painted with some dark colors and uh, i don't know if you can see the teeth there how they kind of shine a little bit and glisten when i saw this at first i wasn't sure if this was made to be like a scary halloween type uh mask it has metal on it here, so I knew it had been hung on the wall at one point, the metal wire. Uh, doing a little research, it looks to me like it's from Bali. Um, and this was uh, some sort of traditional type mask that they make. Uh, super strange. Uh, I say strange, not strange in Bali, but uh, not something you come across every day. I thought that was fun. Here's a couple things um, that I came across from an estate sale a few months ago. They're both made out of leather. The very first one here, it has uh, the profile of what's supposed to be uh, a representation of a Native American uh, with a headdress on, and it says Bemidji, Minnesota on it. If I unsnap it and open it up, what I find is a miniature deck of playing cards. Let me pull a couple of these out. They're kind of old and brittle, so I don't want to uh, damage them. But as you can swoop, and if I say that, and then I'm spilling them all over the place. But as you can see, here are some of those cars, and they got a cool uh, kind of color on the back. I think that these are from the very early 1900s. But it was just like this tiny little travel, almost like a travel pack of a uh, deck of playing cards that somebody could walk around with. I'll show you once I get them fit back in here. It's got this little metal contraption inside that kind of holds them in place. 
and then this folds over and snaps really neat. Uh, there's no reason why I shouldn't have sold this by now, but I just thought it was kind of cool and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. The second one here was this little pouch. On the metal here it says CAP, C-A-P. I'm assuming that was someone's initials. Uh, if you look really close on the bottom and you get out a little loop, you can see that it says 1 tenth, 14 carat. That means that 10% of the metal is uh, solid 14 karat gold, 1 tenth of 14k. So uh, the person selling this, I don't think, knew that the metal on this was gold. First off, when you pop it open here, you slide this little, uh, little top part off. First thing it says here is it says patent applied for. So I know it's early 1900s or 1800s. When you see the patent applied for, that often indicates some that it's at least 80, around 80 uh, uh, years uh, or 100 years old. Uh, and then it says real ostrich made in England. So if you get a close-up of that leather, it's not just look leather, you've got these little bumps. And that's a part of what the ostrich skin is like once uh, the hide is taken off of it. But the coolest thing about it, if that wasn't in and of itself, is inside is an open but not fully used pack, old pack, of Lucky Strike <laughs> cigarettes. And looking on here, uh, it says it was in Reedsville, North Carolina. That's interesting. I actually never had seen that before. I'm living in western North Carolina. I don't really know where Reedsville is, but we'll check it out. 20, uh, 20 cigarettes. Uh, this is definitely a 30 or 40 year old, probably pack of cigarettes. Um, not nearly as old as the pouch, but somebody was using it until, you know, back then. Again, this was at an estate sale. Uh, some people, somebody had passed away, it sounds like, and then uh, their estate was uh, being liquidated, essentially. And so I got both of these very cool things that you don't see every day. I did a video on this one already a little while ago. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out too, but it's this old pocket watch. I regularly, when I see them at the good price at Goodwills or thrift stores, I'll get grab bags of jewelry, costume jewelry, because sifting through that, I can find actual pre precious metals, silver, gold, stuff that has night like precious and semi-precious gemstones in, or nice designer costume jewelry uh, that you can sell for good money, and, and it pays for itself almost every time. Well, every time it does, because the stuff I don't uh, find that's good, I'll lump together one lot and I'll sell it and basically make my money back on that. But moving on. I bought one of these bags for $25 and was inside with just a bunch of plastic junky stuff like I usually get, but then in a little pouch was this pocket watch. It doesn't look that great on the outside. It's a kind of an older tarnished kind of silver look on the back. You can see that at one time that was painted uh, and it has just worn off. Now you're seeing just kind of this coppery brass color on the bottom there. But if I open this sucker up, and you can see that the shell that comes in here, it's got a little piece of cloth and fabric in there. I immediately knew that this was quite old. The fact that the pocket watch has Roman numerals on it and it's a large face like that was an indication to me also that it was older. Uh, you know, initially they had Roman numerals and then they eventually started writing them out, uh, the regular, uh, just one, two, three, and not Roman numerals. If you open it up, it's got an enamel face here. And then the coolest part, Aside from the fact that uh, if you know anything about pocket watches or these old watches, when people would go in there and adjust the time, they would write scratch little numbers and, uh, and things in there. Uh, so this one has been used many times. It has been worked on many times. But if I crack this sucker open, see if you can see it. The movement inside has all of these gemstones. It's got like six or eight that I can see that are roughly three quarters of a carat in size. I got pink ones, green ones, blue ones. I have not tested to see what these are, but um, I have looked at them with a loop and they do have inclusions in them. So that is an indication to me based on the age that they are authentic gemstones and not just glass. So pretty awesome uh, find. I looked this up, I couldn't find anything. It was exactly that. Um, uh, like this, but the closest one I could find sold for $5,000 <laughs> on eBay in the last 90 days. So I've got it out there. I've got several watchers on it. I've listed this for about $5,800 and I'm going to see if I can sell this. Uh, this might be one of the best finds uh, because I made all my money back on that jewelry bag. So this is essentially was free to me. Uh, at this point, I have zero dollars into it and anything I can get could be really good money. I'm excited about that. The last thing here, 
of the smaller stuff is this uh, pin. You can see in the back there, it's a, a pin that you would wear. Uh, it also has the loops on the top so that it can be worn as a pendant as well. But on the front, it has what looks to be some, like sort of, some sort of an Egyptian uh, cat animal or something like that. One of those, you know, the gods that they had back then a lot of times were... Um, they have like human forms, but then some sort of an animal head, a cat, or um, something like that. And this one uh, is made out of some sort of brass color. All around the back it has these etchings that look like Sanskrit. Um, there was definitely this craze in the early 1900s, late 1800s, uh, where they were unearthing stuff back in Egypt. And so there was this craze of uh, interest in that part of the world and things that were happening. So there was a bunch of jewelry made uh, that had these themes in it. I haven't sold this yet or put it up for auction because on the back it has a stamp, much in the way that uh, gold or silver would be stamped, uh, to tell the purity and what the type of metal is. And I have not done exhaustive research on it, but the research I've done has not turned up what these indicate. And I don't want to put this up for $20 and sell it if it turns out that this is made out of gold <laughs> or some sort of other uh, nice thing. I also need to look and see if I can find ones that are like this that have sold and that will give me a good indication of the current value. Uh, not something I find every day. This was again in one of those grab bags at a Goodwill among, you know, WWJD plastic bracelets and uh, I think I saw a Spice Girls necklace in there and <laughs> some all kinds of other stuff. And then all of a sudden you got like a, maybe a 1905 pendant in there. You really never know what people are dropping in. And a lot of times the people who are pricing stuff and sticking those things in bags, if it's not obviously gold or silver or obviously something super high value, they just throw it in a bag and they move it on because they got so much stuff coming in they don't have the time to mess with it. That's how I found this pocket watch. Not saying you're going to find something like that every time. I don't. But every once in a while, I do. All right, cousins, the last few items that I've got for you today. I got four more. I'll start with the least strange, maybe. And that's this sword. I came across this at, believe it or not, at a thrift store <laughs> uh, a couple weeks back. It's got a brass hilt, uh, a carved, like an ornate carved, it looks like flowers and things. So my guess is this was for a female. Um, not trying to be sexist there, just uh, back in that time period, if a man was walking around with a flowery, gilded uh, a sword, uh, you know, it might have been a problem for him. Uh, we have a wooden handle here, got some uh, wire going over it, and maybe what was leather or some sort of grip uh, at one point, not quite sure what that is, but it's crumbling off of there. But it's quite interesting. If I pull this out of the sheath, it has an actual nice blade here. Uh, it's quite sharp still. Uh, the, the sheath itself, uh, the scabbard, I guess, is uh, bent a little bit, and it's, it's definitely seen better days, but for $30, which is what I paid for this, uh, I definitely think I'm going to make my money out of that and some. Uh, really cool. This is the first time I found a sword in a thrift store. Somebody was just like, well, I better go take the sword down to the Goodwill today. Get rid of it. I don't know what people are thinking. You just never know what you're going to find. Next thing up is a piece of artwork. I liked it. Guys, I'm going to start off by saying I think it's cool. It's strange, but I like it. It's this right here. Uh, and you can see it's on linen. Uh, it's on a piece of fabric here. Uh, but it is not on a stretcher. It at one time was on a stretcher and it has been taken off since. Uh, so I would need to put it back on a stretcher and then put it in a frame before I would want to sell it. Uh, but it has this sign down here. It is signed by what appears to be Keith Vaughn. In doing some research, it turns up this is a reproduction of uh, a similar piece that looks like this by an artist uh, who's quite famous. This one is not that one, but it's still pretty interesting. So what we do, what I think we have here is a woman uh, with a ball bat, and she is approaching someone who is caught in being both nude and smelling their own armpit at the same time. And now, I don't know, uh, I wouldn't come to a bat fight in the nude or with stinky pits uh, if it were me, but, I mean, this, this, these people did, and apparently they got caught in, in this situation by a painter. And so they, uh, have, uh, they are forever immortalized in this pose, uh, much like the people in Pompeii uh, we're just stuck doing whatever they were doing as the ash and, uh, and uh, fire was coming down on them, which is a super sad thing. Uh, 
Don't know how I jumped into that. We're talking about artwork here, guys. It's fun. Okay, so what we got here is a leather purse. Next to last item here. Uh, it's not just a leather purse. It's made out of crocodile or alligator. And what you can see on the front there are its actual hands, or its paws, or whatever you would call a crocodile uh, uh, mitts there, uh, with the actual claws still uh, intact there as well. So you got this nice little clasp purse. Seems all uh, pretty nondescript until you, uh, you know, you look at the front there. Uh, inside it has uh, what at one time was very innocuous and normal looking uh, mirror. Now it's quite creepy looking because it's got some sort of a fungus uh, growing on in there. Uh, it fits. It fits with what it looks like now. The cord has uh, since broken off. Uh, you can see uh, the, the, the little uh, leather uh, cord there, it's, but it's inside here. Uh, still got it. It's braided. Kind of neat. Uh, at one time, this was quite nice. Uh, I don't know what woman was carrying this around or what kind of statement that that makes to people uh, to say, uh, I'm the kind of person that puts crocodile hands on my handbags and I also don't know what kind of a man that attracts. Uh, I don't know if I want to know, frankly. Uh, but anyhow, that one time someone just absolutely loved this, they used it, and it's super strange. So someone who likes bizarre stuff like this might collect old leather goods is going to just eat this thing up. Just be careful of the claws. And then finally, perhaps one of the strangest Guys, things that I have found since I've been outsourcing in the last six months is this little box. The box itself says SS White Base Plate Rubber Natural Base, the SS White Dental Manufacturing Company. That gives you a little indication of what I'm about to pull out here. Now, I'm just going to sort of spill this out on the table. I will get a picture uh, a close up in just a second. If you actually, if you want to look up right here, you'll see a close up of what uh, I'm talking about here. But let me just sort of pull some of these up for you and show you. Uh, what we have is a, just a variety of dental, uh, old, uh, antique dental pieces. Uh, and what I mean is, now I don't know if these are real, guys. I think that they are. Uh, made to be as implants or even just to practice on. But what I'm about to show you, if you got a, a you know a squeamish stomach, you know look away. And I'm holding this not by the teeth themselves, but by the little brackets. But I have uh, little teeth here with old school uh, metal bands around them with tiny little uh, screws and tiny little bolts <laughs> to wrap around this. And then on the ends, as you can see, they have been filled with some sort of a filling. I've got all kinds of these straps that are gold plated and silver plated. I got springs. I got a little, what looked to be uh, original dentures. Uh, someone's, uh, you know, a couple of teeth there sticking on a, a little metal bar. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. Here's another one right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Super strange stuff. All kinds of, here's one of the little bands that's made out of gold that's not on a tooth. Let's see if you can get that in the dark of my my vest here. Um, but antique stuff. This says uh, it steals anti-flux, uh, prevents soldering entering where you're not wanted. So as these dentists were soldering uh, this metal, they didn't want it to, to get out and get on people's into people's mouth. Um, I've got old needles here that they were using when they were when they were performing this stuff. Tons of these old boxes that was holding. Uh, all of these dental supplies and, and things. Um, tons of copper copper bands, copper wire here, you can see. Um, and the list goes on. I don't even know what all is in this. And then a bunch of little, a little tin of a bunch of pieces of metal for soldering. Um, guys, just an incredible thing. People who are dentists specifically probably be interested. Here's an old glass vial that still has some of the glue in it. I'm actually pulled it up like this and it's got a tiny little cork in the top there and it's still still half full. So uh, incredible stuff here guys. Uh, I paid ten dollars for this box and uh, most people would say ew disgusting. I don't want to touch that. Uh, I also don't love touching it. I'm going to wash my hands as soon as this video is over. But, guys, cool stuff. Um, you find weird things like this all the time. Uh, hang around for a second. I'm going to give you just a smidge of advice when talking about bizarre items. Guys, if you ever come across things that are super strange or bizarre, like hats with crocodile teeth on them, 
Make sure you get them because people eat that stuff up. Sometimes they'll pay really crazy money for stuff that's really strange. It's like watching a train wreck. You can't take your eyes off of it, even though you really know it shouldn't be that interesting. People are intrigued. They're fascinated by this kind of stuff. Some people only collect the bizarre. And so don't discount stuff just because it seems weird. Uh, just because you may not be that interested in it doesn't mean somebody else is. Take care, guys. Good luck hunting. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair. Rusty.